Well, mm -hmm. so uh, tomorrow starts the Elite Series, as everybody picked. The uh, Yeah, the I've picked, bucket. but I'll tell you what. I'm going to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and change it. <laughs> Always. Oh, that's what I'm thinking, too. Always. <laughs> Just like we did last year, every morning we'd text each other at five o'clock. Be like, nah, I changed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, my, had... mine's, mine's locked in, dude. I had a good a good strategy on who I picked, and uh, that's what I'm going with. Yeah. I think the uh, I think the worst tournaments I had were the tournaments where I made a last minute switch. And yeah. The... Mm -hmm. That is with it. Yeah. The dude I had before dude, always. The... Did better. The best tournaments that I've had were literally where I I would forget, and then I would just go through and just pick five random guys, and every single time those like they did good. <laughs> hey, that's a good strategy, I guess. <laughs> hey. I promise that only works for Colby. <laughs> no <doubt>. Hey, <laughs> dude, I just realized today, man. Uh, Daryl Gleason's not in the elites anymore. No, mm -hmm. no he he got. Yep. He got bumped. Yep. He fishing the uh, Toyota series today. That's when I really – okay, so I went looking through, and because, of course, you hear Toledo Ben, the first person mm -hmm. I went looking for was Daryl Gleason. Oh. <laughs> right. And I didn't see him on there, and I was like, nah, well, I am probably just looked over to whatever. And then I swear at that moment, Brandon called, and he was telling me who was where at the Toyota series, and he said, mm -hmm. he said man, you know it's – or he said, you know, Ravens jacked up and Daryl Gleason's in like 60th. And I was like, I said, Daryl Gleason's supposed to be practicing right now. Mm. Mm. Ah, dang, man. I didn't realize that he was doing that bad. I mean, I knew he wasn't doing that great, but. His problem is, is he can't fish up north and that really kills him at the end of the year. It hurt, man. Yeah. yeah. My problem is I can't pick fantasy up north and that kills me. <laughs> yeah, hey, I was in. I was in first or tied for first every single tournament last year up until the Northern Swing. Went up. Yep, and then <laughs> I just bombed after that. Yeah, man, I'll tell you, uh, I was really glad to see Rick Bunn come back again. I think he's gone after this year. I'm, I'm just waiting on it, man. I'm waiting on him to be like, all right, that's enough. He should take a victory tour, man. Be like, hey, this is my last year. I'm done after this. Yeah, <laughs> man. Just... <laughs> oh, I thought after he – y'all heard – like, I'm sure y'all seen he he hit that big rolling wave off of that barge up north. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can't remember when that was, but th he's been jacked up ever since that. Mm -hmm. Really? No, I didn't see that. Yeah, man, it messed up like it was his knee or his back. I don't remember what it was, but. Yeah. Hauling butt across the lake, and he actually talked about why he runs a hand throttle instead of a, a hot foot. It's for reasons like that because he's able to use his legs for cushion, but it threw him out of the driver's seat. Oh, dang. It uh, said it jacked yeah. him up good. Yeah, that's rough. But I was glad to see him back, man. I, I don't ever want to see him retire. It'd be weird without Rick Klein coming up to the stands. <laughs> I know, man, because, hey, I watched the lives just to see him go up there and whisper in the mic. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> He's, uh, that's the dude, man, I'm telling you. I won't ever pick him for my fantasy team, but I, I do love Rick Klein. No. <laughs> hey, but you know, and it's funny because – you go in there and he's always like, he'll have like 3% or 5% or 7 Like, he's always got that fan base, you know? <laughs> I'm telling you. He's always, always got that. <laughs> always. Yep. Anyways. Well. Uh, who do you uh, think has the most percentage on this, on this tournament? I'm going to say Ben. Yeah, I'm looking right now. Yeah, I think Ben was at like 40. Was at 40 yeah. something whenever I – yeah, was looking got to be way up there. He's at because of what bucket he's in. So he's ben is at forty. Ben is at forty. Chris Saldane is the next one I see at twenty-seven. Yeah, Lee yeah. Lee Lattisek sure. was up there too. Yeah, 
And then and then Keith Combs is at twenty six. Those are the top three picks right now. Right. Which uh, Keith Combs, that's not a terrible pick. No. no. But uh so, especially okay. this time of year. Let's let's talk about the weight first. What 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 weight are y'all going with? All right, it has to be a hundred for sure. That's my. It, they're weighing in a hundred pounds for sure. Yep. Uh, I put, Dude, I think I either put seventy nine point four or seventy four or eighty four point nine. One one of those variations. I don't know. I put one hundred one, uh, and two ounces. I think. Yep. That's a good guess. I don't think it's a good guess. Man, I went. I've been waiting on. I I work with this dude. This got a a buddy that's supposed to be out there. Anyways, he ain't heard nothing. I was wanting to see, like, who was – if they was following anybody or what he heard. But, anyways, I did hear last week uh, through, a, through a friend that a guy said it's it's not going to be what everybody's expecting. But that was before we had this little bit of warning. I say I'm warning. Telling you. Man. I mean, it – uh, dude, It's going to be been, hot. It's gonna be hot. It's been, it's been warm, man. Yeah. Like, hey, I was looking at, I was looking at water temperature charts today, and everywhere's about five degrees over what it was last year. Mm-hmm. Hey, we had about, we had about four or five service calls today, so you know it's starting to warm up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I've been, I've been waiting on this eighty degree weather to come back. Yeah, you got it. I now went, it's uh, probably here to stay. I hope yeah, so. I went 92. 92, okay. I'm still leaning on the – I mean, don't get me wrong. Somebody's going to bust a high 20s. But no if they can do it multiple days, you know. What was uh what was Ben's weight on the Open last year? I know it was a three-day event. But it... I think it was 77. I think you're right. It was 70-something. The high 70s. I think yeah. it was – hang on just a second. I For some reason, I thought – yeah, it was 77 and 14 ounces. 77, 14. Yep. yep. 77, 14, and then – man, that, it fell off quick after that, though. It's 26 – that's 26 a day. He can do it again. That's pretty good. <laughs> Times that by four, you're over 100. And that's in April, man. If you look back, the last time the elites were at Toledo was in, what, 17 and yep. John Murray? Jamie. Huh? Was it in 17? Uh, 17 or 18. Yeah. And then uh, didn't John Murray win it? Uh, I think so. Or Jamie Hartman, maybe. I know it was a low weight, like it was 70. It was low. It was real low. Yeah. But that was also April, but that was the same right. week that Ben busted 77 on. Mm-hmm. At least come that back a lot. Toledo, that was also when Toledo was really taking a dive on. It was, man. Toledo wasn't. It wasn't like it used Toledo to. Toledo wasn't doing nothing then. It was coming back. I will tell you. All right. So it took, it, took me, it took me this long to get it pulled up, but I went 79.4. Okay. Awesome. You went seventy nine four. Okay. That's yeah. really. Low. That's pretty low. That's it's, really low. Not it. If it's seventy nine, they'll never go back to Toledo. Yeah. Yeah. Look, yeah. I went one hundred eight and a half. With all these guys that can scope, like they're catching. Yeah. And yeah. Hey, you look at the guys that did good. I'm just thinking off the top of my head. I know Christy did – I've seen him do good multiple times at Toledo. Polinick always does good. Uh, Gerald no. Swindle, believe it or not. Yep. He always does good in East Texas. And he's, and he's always one of them that comes out of the gate hot, you know? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Well, I guess let's, uh, let's get started with the picks. Um uh, Colby, you want to go first? Who you got in bucket A? Uh, Hackney. Greg Hackney. Good pick. 
Okay. Louisiana man. Going with the crowd, I dig exactly. it. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Going go. with the crowd. He's going to go get up in there in that shallow water. and. Uh-huh. And... Hey, real quick, is Keith Poche fishing the Elite Series this year? That's a good question. I didn't see it. I don't see I him see on him. The... Yeah. I mean, he's qualified. He only fished one right. year, so he can't drop yeah. out yet. I was just curious. I, I knew that he had, you know, he was qualified, but I didn't I, I didn't even think to look and see if he was on, in a bucket or not. But He probably got cut from cheating in practice or something. <laughs> or during the tournament, you know. <laughs> look, man, I didn't know that dam was there. I was just running. <laughs> I felt something, and then next thing you know, I was, I was headed down to Spain, you know? He's a wild turd, man. <laughs> uh, he All right, Ron, good. let's hear it. Bucket A. I got a wild one for y'all. Come on. I went scopers all five. Well, I say scopers all five. I went scopers for four, and the fifth bucket was kind of like a toss-up. Bucket number one, Koya Fajita. Oh, hey! Look, you what can't... the fuck you liking these these Japanese dudes? Look, man, that dude has like four live scopes on his boat. I'm I'm a believer. Okay, <laughs> I dig. I mean, I dig it. But we're also talking about Toledo Ben, man. I know, I know. I, I look. I figured if I was gonna be ballsy, be ballsy at the beginning, not the end. Look, this is East Texas. If he if he wins. On Toledo yeah. Ben, he ain't making it out of there. No, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> He'll cut every tire on his truck. <laughs> this is the no. Texas man. They're gonna be following right. him out of the ramp. <laughs> they yeah. ain't gonna let him sit still. <laughs> uh, all right, so look, guys, look, this was this was a difficult one for me because I really wanted to go. I really wanted to go with John Cox just because I like. That was my that was my pull too. I really want to go with John Cox, but I ended up going with with Joey Safuentes. Okay, yeah, good. that's a good. That's good. good. Yeah, he, he's a scoper, and I feel like yep. he can go up and fish Toledo Bend. Oh know, yeah, all fishing. Yep uh, he he won. Didn't he win two events last year? I know he one did win two. He did. He won, he won Saint Clair and uh, what was the other one? Um, in Mississippi, uh, he won two. He won one down south and one up north. I can picture it. He was out there on that tree. Where was he? Yeah, at? he, he was on Bass Live fishing that he damn tree. Drop shot. Yes. Yep. Man. That that was somewhere in Tennessee, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Oh gosh, it was where. Uh, <laughs> Didn't didn't somebody have a wreck? It it was on uh it was um uh, in Florida. Mm. It was like Seminole. Uh, Seminole, yep. Seminole. Seminole. He won That's Seminole right. and St. Clair. That's right. Yep. yep. All yeah. right. I got a curveball for y'all. Okay. Now, both of the cooks are in bucket A. I mean, both of the Drews are in bucket A. You know how I'm about the Drew. But this dude is from Louisiana. He come out swinging hard last year. Tyler Rivet. Mm-hmm. That's a good mm-hmm. one. Native. That's a, good pull. That's, a, that's a quality pull. Yep. Kind of hey, off of the off the I, I don't want to say off the radar, but yeah. He's kind of weird. <laughs> well, he won the first event and then didn't he come in like third or something in the second? Dude, he had a really good year. Yeah. Yeah. One Okeechobee. Really yeah. That's a so good one. I, I was got the fl- – go ahead. I go was ahead. hung up between that, between Rivette, Hagney, or Cox. Mm-hmm. That was my – and, and dude, I'm telling Hagney's, really, Hagney's ready. He's ready for his time. Yep. Yeah. Rivette's one of those scoper – Normal fishermen hybrids, you know what I mean? Yeah, caught in between for sure. He is, 
I know. Do you know the coolest? Like this, I really like him. This was this was so cool. He found those fish. Where were they at Okeechobee? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so he went up the river and he found those fish up there catching crappie <laughs> for them to eat that night. And he was like, "Dang, that's a big crappie." He throws it over there with the I don't know what he's throwing jerk bait or something. Jerk I think bait, he ended yeah. up catching them on that jerk bait that uh, Hank Cherry gave him. Yeah, and he's like. Catches a five or six, those over there catches another one. He's like, I might as well come up here and fish for the tournament. <laughs> Turns around and looking for crappie, man. Hey, that was pretty wild. That's kind of that's how me and you found those fish on uh on Martin Creek, Dylan. It sure was, wasn't it? White bass. To we eat. were up there catching <laughs> white bass, and all of a sudden, Jared, what I don't remember if you caught a big fish or if you caught two or three in a row or what it was. Yeah, it was just a, it was some decent largemouth we were catching next to the white bass. So it was it was pretty cool. And you know what's funny? Them dudes come in there and caught twenty six pounds the next day, sitting right there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from us. All day they sat there too. They sat there all day, right there where me and Jared had them. Pitched. Those doing. fish literally just moved from one side to the other. <laughs> wild man god i want to go back to martin creek so bad but that's another conversation for another day <laughs> uh, we we may be able to arrange that all right bet. <laughs> that place is hard, man. i know the guy that picks the lakes so <laughs> that place <is> right <laughs> can't see him on camera right now but yeah yeah all right bucket b <laughs> yeah but he's here he's here <laughs> all right, bucket B. Uh, this one, this one hurt my heart because Brandon Polinick is also in there. Uh, and the, if you know me, disrespect. Brandon Polinick has been on every dude every tournament for the past three years. Brandon Polinick's been on my roster, uh, <laughs> but I had to give it to it to Ben, <laughs> the the newcomer, the rookie. First first tournament, I had to show some love. Yep, and plus it's Toledo Ben. We all, we all know how Ben is on Toledo Ben. We all yeah. know. How many should have been in bucket A? That is yeah. disrespectful. Dude, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that is what I'm saying, man. But then yeah. if you're going to put him in bucket A, how, I mean, you got to think about Jason Christie. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Jack Brosnick. Mm-hmm. Lee Livesey. Yep. Dude. You can't stack them all, you know. No, no, you can't stack them all. <laughs> but we all know. Dude, Lee, Lee Lucy was in a C or a D group, C bucket, wasn't he? No, he's he's, he's in B. He's in B. Oh, he, he's also in B. Dang. I wanted to I wanted to pick Lee because I was like before I even got to see the buckets, I was like, look, I'm picking Lee, Ben, and I was going down the list. And the first, <laughs> I do the same thing, and then I look in there, and all five are in the same bucket. Yeah. Hey, look! If if Lee Livesey finishes last in this tournament, and on Toledo Ben, he's still bucket A for Fork. You know he is. Oh yeah. <laughs> so Ben is the guy that you have to pick in this tournament just to keep up with the crowd. This yep. you're not going to pull away from the crowd with this pick. You just got to. Yeah. Yep. That's going to be the Lee pick next next week. So know? did everybody oh, yeah. pick Ben? Oh yeah. I Everybody but you. I did not. <laughs> oh. You didn't pick Ben. <laughs> and, and now, hang on. I'm not jumping on the hater train, man, because I love Ben, and and I love the fact that he's got so many haters. I dig that. I do too. I do too. <laughs> but, but, man, I, I don't know. His first elite tournament. Now, yeah. I mean, we we all know he can perform on stage, right? Like. Mm-hmm. He's not going to let the pressure get to him. He's cool as a fan. But there's not too much that's going to slip by these dudes. Uh-uh. You know what I mean? If you're not fixing to win the Elite Series event by 10 pounds. These guys are next level. <laughs> yeah. He, he, I think he just took a step up. And mm-hmm. and I think Ben also seen at the end, fading out towards the end of the season in the Opens, seeing that, okay, the, maybe the, there are some dudes out there that can do this too, you know. Right. Yep. But but he, I mean, they call it the Elite Series for a reason, and I, I still mm-hmm. think he's going to do great. I think he's going to be in top twenty. But I mm-hmm. think Paul, if he comes in twentieth, I think Paul is going to come in nineteenth. 
Fair enough. I mean, yeah, no, you're you're right. No doubt Polinick can finish. He can he can win a tournament. He knows how to win. But I feel like Polinick is just a really good points fisherman, you know, like he yeah, yeah. up in the points. Yeah, he's on, and he can make a lot of money. There's oh. not many tournaments he goes to that he doesn't cash a check in. So yeah, and there's a lot of okay. Good well, do you guys. think he's to the point? Do you think Polinick's to the point in his career where he's like, all right, I'm just gonna go try to win everything? He should be 100. percent He has nothing he's left to prove. Twice, right? Yeah, he's won AOI twice, 16 and then 2021. 22, maybe. Yeah. 2020, yeah. Yeah. He's won a couple yep. of blue trophies, right? He's five. won like six. Yeah, five or six. Yeah, yeah he's won yeah, a lot. Quite a bit. Yeah. No, nah, he's yeah. just all around good, man. That's not a bad pick anytime. You add a and classic to that, yeah. he's a legend. <laughs> and East Texas, he's, dude, he's won on Rayburn. Yep. Yeah. I mean, he knows how to catch No, no, you just got to. You just go out there and just go out there and swing. That's all you're doing at this point for him. Yeah, he's got yeah. the legends exemption. He's got it all. Is it does it takes one angler of the year to get that legends exemption? Yep, one angler of the year or one classic win. That's all you need. That's why Cliff Pace is fishing the uh, um, opens this year, and Jordan Lee used his classic qualification to for his legends exemption this year. Mm-hmm. Next year, if their one becomes open, Cliff Pace will be back in the Elite Series, too. Hey, I like Cliff. So, dude. I, I like do Cliff. Too. I do, too. <laughs> I, I like Cliff. I guess he won it in, like, 12 or 13 or something thir- like that. He won 13, yeah. 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 I like Cliff. I can't remember, dude. I was – he Cliff may have been on the Elites or may – I don't remember what it was. But I was, I was still riding the school bus because I was reading Bassmaster magazine on the school bus, and it was Cliff Bates talking about these crankbaits. And I was like, "Oh man, that makes a lot." You know, twelve, ten, twelve years old or whatever. Mm-hmm. Cliff Bates been around for a minute. Yeah, he's been on there for a while. Oh really? He's been around things for sure. So everybody picked Ben except me. <laughs> yep. I hope that pays off. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, All right, bucket C. Bucket, bucket C. Let's hear it. What you got? All right. So this is the the only one that kind of throws off my common trend. Uh, but from South Carolina, I took Brian New. Okay. Brian right. not bad at all. All right. I mean, he was he was good to me last year. I'm just I'm just rolling with what I know. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that's what we're doing. All right. Well, I'm okay. Gonna, I picked one that um I picked one that's going to either really make my season or it's, it's going to bomb it, okay? And I think y'all know who I'm going to pick. Mr. Steve Kennedy. <laughs> hey, if they're biting a swim bait, we're all screwed. <laughs> hey, I know that's right. Hey, he's oh, around man. a big swim bait. <laughs> yep. Hey, he might only catch four fish a day, but they're gonna be big fish. They're I'm be just giant. wondering. I'm just wondering if he's gonna change his jersey. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's been in that same jersey for as far back as I can remember. If he's changed it, it ain't been by much. Yep. Yep. I was I was really surprised to see Clark Winlet is the most picked in this bucket. Is it is he the most picked in Clark uh bucket? In bucket. Yep. Hmm. All right. <laughs> I got a wild one for y'all in bucket C. Come on. So I picked this first, you know, first five of this first event on Toledo Ben. I'm going to tell you right now, the nine guys that just came from the Opens are some of the best we will ever see. I These agree guys are live scoping son of a guns. Trey McKinney. <clears throat> I knew you was going to say it. Trey McKinney, baby. I'm telling you right now, this dude's nice, what, 18 years old. 
But yeah. he's a hammer, and he led the points in the opens for most of the year up until the end. Trey McKinney is a fucking hammer, dude. <laughs> he's good, man. He's good. Yeah. But you said it. He's a live scoper. He is. He is. If they pull up at the wrong time, he might be screwed. But we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. I that's 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 pretty ballsy pig. <laughs> I'm telling you, I I got three guys that are newcomers to the Elite Series this year on my bucket. So we still got one more to go. All right. <laughs> I thought I thought not going with Ben was a pretty gutsy. That's pretty good. <laughs> I went. I went with G Man. You went with G Man. All right. Yep. All right. I got G Man. All right. So recap. That's, that's safe. Kobe. Go ahead. Brian New. Yeah. Kobe had Brian New. Dylan, you had uh, G Man. G Man. Jared, who do you have? I have um, Steve Kennedy. Okay, so we're all different. I got Trey McKinney. So we got four different ones in bucket C. <laughs> that's pretty interesting. <laughs> that's gonna that's gonna spread it out a little bit there in bucket I, C. I'm already surprised because normally me and Jared's picks are almost exactly the same. Right, right. And we'll, we'll come like the night before. I'll call him just to check and be like, "Yep, I got him. I got him. I got him." <laughs> I, got, I wanted to go yep. change something. Uh huh. How many times last year did we only have one different, Jared? <laughs> oh, he took off for a second. Uh oh. Yep. I'm gonna do the same. Take a potty break. <laughs> uh oh. Then there, then there were two. What's up? Colby, you, you can't leave. Sorry about that. Uh, no, I, I mean, if I, if I do, I'm leaving Earth. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a fact. That's yeah. a fact, brother. I hope you've been living right. Yeah, I mean, where'd Ron I guess go? There's only one way to find out. Bathroom. Ron had to go. He had to go potty. <laughs> He's got a little bladder. No, I said, Jared. I said, how many times last year were we only one bucket different? Oh, a lot. Yeah, we picked our whole. I remember I called you not before, and yeah, I got him. I got him. I got him. Almost every. I thought he was just agreeing with everything I said. Yeah, and then we looked the next morning. Oh, man, he wasn't lying. Yeah, no doubt. Bucket D is Chris Zaldane and Keith Combs. Yep. Keith Cobes is an interesting one. That's who I've got. Yeah. I'm waiting on him, dude. I'm waiting on him. Look, it's this, gotta is a, happen. this is an East – you know, he lives on Raver now in Huntington. But, yeah, man, he scares me, man. He, he's like kind of like a Steve Kennedy. He lives and dies by what he knows. He yeah. might be the best crank, deep cranker on the Elite series man i've watched that dude on conroe i can't i think it was do y'all remember like that that he won it but it was that texas yep that, i don't remember what it was him and uh i had what was it called jared the it was the toyota it was yeah i know what you're talking about it was him and mike iconelli that Tied and went into yep. overtime. Right. So Conroe, Conroe was like four foot low in the one I'm talking about. It may not, I don't remember. I had my first bass boat. I had a, what was it? That 80, it was an 83 winner with a Suzuki 225. And I followed that dude around on the first day. Really? And I, I bet I burned. 30 gallons of gas following him around. <laughs> he would shut down and make two casts. Never even put the trolling motor in the water. And he'd be gone again. Really? 
That's crazy. And I was like, there's no way this is how this is how you're supposed to fish Conroe. There's no way. <laughs> there's no way. He chunked that giant crankbait that looked like you could ride it. He would chunk that thing right in the middle of a brush pile, pull up half the pile with it. If there wasn't a fish, he was gone to the next. I think he was just playing defense and catching fish. He was spooking every fish off that pile and trying to catch one. Mm. Man. That joker would burn. I'm, I'd hate to see his fuel bill. <laughs> I guarantee it. Man. That's but I, I agree with what you said. He he lives by that. Yeah, he does. And yeah. I hey, I respect what your dad uh was co angler with him, huh? He was. He told 20, me twenty twenty two Bassmaster Open on Sam Rayburn. Keith Combs won that tournament. And, and your dad was with him on the last day, wasn't he? The, the second day. Second, second day. day. So yeah, it was three day, you know, the third day they go top ten. And they fish by themselves. But the yeah, first two right. days, they have a co-angler. Dad yeah. fished with him on Rayburn. And, uh, man, that was – Dad couldn't stop talking about it. It was, it was pretty cool. They uh, – I won't say where they fished, but, you know, it was uh, – He Dad – so they went to the first couple spots, and Dad was trying to throw a crankbait behind him, a big 6XD behind him. And yeah. Keith Combs turned around and looked at him and said, look, man, your best bet is to drag something behind the boat or drag something next to all these trees we're fishing. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I'm covering everything as we're going. You have no prayer with a crankbait. <laughs> <laughs> Keith Combs told him that straight up, man. If, you know, Dad had a good time, though. Keith was a nice guy to him and all that. So Awesome. Yeah. I don't think I'd have picked a rod up. I don't know. Doing good, Dylan. We missed you, brother. We, we need you back, man. I'm I'm gonna make one. I know, I know. I'm gonna make one. It's coming. Hey. It, if it wouldn't have been raining, I'd have been at Ravers. I know. I know. It Jared, sucked. let me in. It sucked. My feet were wet all day at Rayburn. <laughs> Brandon kept telling me he's like, dude, it ain't even gonna rain. I was like, bro, this is East Texas. No, if it's raining the ten percent. It's gonna rain, dude. Yep. Yep. I've been mean, I've been chasing them things around for a long time. I know when it's going to rain. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right, we're here. We uh we're under a time crunch we didn't know about, so <laughs> not, not anything too crazy. I see y'all. Uh... Let me Where get back at? to my. Do we do? Okay, we so we just three? got into bucket. <laughs> D. Oh D. crap! Oh, let me pull mine back up. I switched to my computer. All right, so everybody, just go over a little recap real quick. So bucket A, I got Joey Fuentes. Bucket B, I have Ben Milliken. And bucket C, I have Stephen Kennedy. Ronald. Oh, now y'all are gonna make me forget. Anybody remember what I had for bucket A? Hang on. Hey, I remember that. Uh, you got the it, Japanese man. guy. Oh, Oh, yeah. Koya Fujita. Yep. All right. Koya Fujita, bucket A, Ben Milliken, bucket B, and Trey McKinney for bucket C. Yep. All right. I had uh, Greg Hackney, bucket A, uh, Ben Milliken, B, and then Brian New, C. I got Tyler Revit, Brandon Polinick, Daryl Swindle. It's a good lineup. I like it. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Bucky D, I'll go first. I picked. I picked Keith Combs. I picked Keith Combs. And I really don't see anybody else that I that really stands out, you know. Uh, yeah. Bucky D, Jared, if I would have, if I would have guessed, Jared, I figured you would have went with Caleb Summerall. I did. Yeah. yeah. I thought about him. But. And this is kind of dumb. I know that I know it's dumb to even think about this, but I, I looked up how far New Iberia, Louisiana was from Toledo Bend, and it's all the way across the state. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, Rayburn's closer to Toledo than that. I was like, Yeah, Keith's got him. <laughs> it's all about the travel. Yeah. Like, and I'm just thinking how many times 
Like it's it's way more difficult for Caleb to go to Toledo than it is for Keith, you know. Yeah. Yep. 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 Ronald. I got another wild one for y'all. Rookie, elite series rookie. Oh, I know where he's going. Live scope. Look, you will find I think all of my picks this year for this tournament are live scopers except for one, and he's kind of a live scoper too. So and he's part of that younger generation too. But Love this it. is also my third lead series rookie of my picks. Okay. So okay. the first one I had was Ben Milliken, Trey McKinney. This one I'm going with Tyler Williams. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. I like him. Tyler I'm just, I, thought you, I, I thought it was going to be Logan just, Parks. I thought it was gonna be is Logan Logan is a rookie, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep, I think so. Yep. So it was kind of a toss up between those two, but Tyler Williams showed me something in those opens that is just I'm telling you, this rookie class is unreal, dude. I'm t- <laughs> I'm, I'm, I watched them. <laughs> They're good. They're good. I watched them close. The, every one of them that made it was glued to that live scope. I'm telling you, every one of them. There wasn't, a, there wasn't a single guy under twenty or older than twenty five, with the exception of Ben Milliken, because he's he's still kind of a rookie, but I mean he's older than the rest of them, you know. Yeah, I mean? but he, I mean he's really twenty five. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. So I went with Colby. Tyler Williams for this one. Colby, <laughs> man, I. Uh... I stuck from the same hometown as uh, Greg Hackney. You know, I was just thinking, like, maybe they bring some just absolute units out of there and picked up uh, Logan Latuso. That's a good pick. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's a really good pick. Yep. I I was on that same train, and I'll tell you why. Logan Latuso came out strong last year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, as a rookie, he came out strong. He's good on Toledo. Mm-hmm. And he's just cool. Yeah, yeah. Dope, dope last name. I was like, I got to go with him. I mean. I'll go with Latuso, you know? Yeah. <laughs> pretty cool, man. I think I'm he a, go, go ahead. Go ahead before I change. So, I I think Logan Latuso, if I remember correctly, I, I could be wrong about this, but when he qualified for the Elite Series the year prior, not last year, but the year before, he qualified on Rayburn. Yep. And weighed in a mega bag. On the last day. Yes. He had like two fish the first day and weighed in a mega bag to make the Elite Series. Yep. He had to have it. Like he was sitting yeah. at 86 or something. Right. Right. He had to have it. And he weighed that mega bag and made the Elite Series. <laughs> Meant to be, man. Man. <laughs> I like him. I was I was really hung and I, this may be the one that I wake up at four o'clock in the morning and change. <laughs> but I ended up going with Keith Combs. Okay. I, like I ended up going with Keith Combs. My man. Yep. Now for me, it was between him and Chris Zaldane. Man, I, I ain't gonna pick Zaldane. Man, I, like I, I did last year and he never came through for me, but I just, I just can't get away from him, man. He's just a cool guy. Zaldane scares me. He's another, yeah, he's he's another dude me. that throws those big swim baits around, you know? Exactly. So, yeah. and or, this have you seen the spoons so, that he throws? Yeah. The spoons yeah. are like this long. They look like surfboards. <laughs> I'm telling you. They're huge. <laughs> they work. They do. They do. All right. Bucket E. This is going to be interesting. I bet none of us have the same pick. I'd be surprised if y'all picked the same guy as me, honestly. But, go ahead. You want me to go first? Go. All right. So, I, I picked John Soko. Okay. 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 He's got a lot to prove this year. He does. Yeah. He, he was does. really bad last year. Hey, he, was, he was freaking – no, he was bad last year. Yeah, was but previously to get to make it to the elite series, mm-hmm. he was on fire. Yeah, he yep. was on fire. Um, yep. 
I think he just had that that bad rookie season. I think he's going to come back in. And I think he's going to do good. Um, obviously, he knows how to live scope, right? Obviously, he knows how to, how to catch big fish. Yeah, I think uh, Toledo's the time he can do it. So, this is the okay. only time I'm thinking him. If he doesn't do good, then he's out. <laughs> Yeah. I'd like to point out something extremely disrespectful. Buddy Gross and Caleb Kufal are in bucket E. Yeah, that was messed up. Caleb Kufal was Especially like Buddy Gross in bucket E. That's brutal, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that is brutal. Rick Clunt needs his own bucket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No question. Bucket bucket F, everybody picks Rick Klein. Period. Everybody gets Rick Klein. <laughs> Let's just pick him for the tiebreaker. You just got to guess his way for the tiebreaker. <laughs> you get to pick between Rick Klein or uh, did he come – what, that other old dude come back? Larry, Larry – uh, Larry Nixon. Larry he didn't Nixon. come back. He didn't That's how that Jordan Lee. That's how Jordan Lee was able to come back because Larry Nixon left. Yeah. Hey, okay, I mean, if I got, Larry Nixon got, was on here, I'm picking him. Yep. So if John Suckup doesn't finish in the top whatever this year, then he's cut, right? Top seventy. Yep. Top seventy. Yep. All right, Ron. Now, let's he, take- could, he could get in like by technicality if he finished seventy first or seventy second. You know what I mean? But all right, Lay Lake winner. Oh, Will Davis Jr. Will oh. Davis Jr. That was yep. a good. Pick. I thought about him. Yeah, I'm right there with you, Ron. I feel like he's gonna be better <laughs> off later. That was the... he's more of a post spawn <laughs> kind of guy. Yeah, Chad's that was the safest, the safest pick I could come up with out of Bucky. Exactly. The, the rest of those guys really scare me. <laughs> so, now I granted, I get there's a four time classic champion in Bucky, e, but that man is old as dirt. And he ain't worth a damn. <laughs> Not <Wow>. anymore. <laughs> I love Marie Klun, man. But now he did win in 2019. Let's not forget that. He did. He did. But look, Will Davis Jr. could do two push-ups, and that'd be more than Rick Klun can do. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, well, I, I just noticed this, and uh, I just want to point out Timothy Dubé or Duby or whatever have you say his name. Yeah, Nashua, New Hampshire. But I didn't even know they knew what bass was in New Hampshire. <laughs> Good for you, Timmy. Yeah, no doubt. That guy only gets to fish four months out of the year. Okay. Good for <laughs> you, dude. Dude, but then you got Matty Wong. Like, come on now. I know. Why? <laughs> hey, Matty Wong. Actually, pretty good. Yeah. Good yeah, shallow super, water, dude. Guy. I watched some old videos of him in college, and he was, yeah, he was pretty good. Long. Yeah. Don't let the state that he's from fool you, dude. Well, whenever we went and watched him weigh in on the Sabine, I think he was like fourth or fifth there. Yeah, way up there. Yeah, yeah. He's pretty, way up. He's from yeah. Hawaii, but he he fished a lot in California. Right, big right. swim bait fish. So, uh, he's pretty good. Heck yeah. Call me. Oh, I'm with Ron on that one, man. I was about to say, I'm. My, my whole idea is like, if I can get somebody just within a drivable vicinity of Toledo Bend, like they're gonna go. Uh, so I, I picked the safest bet, being from Alabama, and plus, it's Will Davis Jr. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I love when you put most of these guys to Toledo Bend. I still couldn't catch a fish over there. <laughs> I feel like everybody just went down this bucket and was like, oh, Brad Watley's from Texas. I'm going to pick him. Brad Watley, dude, he scares me too. You know, his home lake is Lake of the Pines. Yeah. But he's hmm. sketchy too, man. He didn't do worth a damn last year either. He no. got lucky to requalify. He didn't dropped he? out the year before, didn't he? Or he took a medical, he took a medical right. exam. Yeah, medical. Yep. Yeah. I went with uh and I'm going with some history here. And this is the this is a sneaky little snake right here. <laughs> but Jason Williamson. Mm. He's got yep. some history on Toledo. Yep. 
He, he's got some history on Toledo when Toledo was fishing tough. Mm-hmm. And uh, hmm. I expect him in the top 15. Oh, yeah. Bold statement. That's a bold statement. Mm-hmm. That's yep. a bold statement. Yep. That's a bold statement. But I feel like <laughs> – Feel like his time is. I mean, he's been to the classic five times. It's it's time for a blue trophy, you know. Mm-hmm. So who do y'all have winning? That's the question. Winning? Who wins it all? It's gonna be somebody completely off the radar. Mm-hmm. It's going to be somebody from either up north or it's going to be Carl Jockamson. Mm. Matt or Robertson. Matt I Robertson? Matt Robertson. Dude, honestly, the way that he's been fishing lately, I can believe it. Dude, Matt Robertson is my spirit animal. Okay. <laughs> I love that dude. I think he's a complete idiot, but he's hilarious and I love him to death. <laughs> he's he's Funny. hilarious. Yeah. And he 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 plays around a lot, but that dude, yeah, he can catch some big ones for sure. I think you know, I think I've kind of caught on to him where he's kind of a he, you know, he acts a certain way, mm-hmm. and he he makes you feel like he's an idiot, but he on the water, yeah. you don't stand a chance against him. You know what I mean? He knows what he's doing. He may play kind of goofy, but he. Dude's a hammer. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, he he is in the elite series. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so he's, yes, he's a hammer. And All he's a life scoper too. too. No matter if he can't add two plus two or whatever, elite <laughs> series. It might have caught. It may have took him ten years to get a concrete driveway, but Dad Gump. <laughs> he got it. <laughs> he got it. Damn right, he got it. Y'all ever? Hey, I gotta take something. I gotta take something back. Jason Williamson has won two blue trophies. In 2009 at the Battle of the Border in Del Rio. And 2010 at the Pride of Georgia in Evans, Georgia. I don't even know what lake that is in Evans, Georgia. (laughs) I don't know either. Clark Hills Lake. Was that the Battle of the Border? Was that on Amistad? Yes. Okay. So um, it's Bids Bid Sands Lake is in Evans, Georgia. This one says it was uh Cl- the, the tournament on Clark Hills Lake in Evans, Georgia. Hill. Yeah. Yep. And he won that by two ounces. He beat Cliff Crochet and Terry Scroggin. Mm. Mm. Old Terry. All right, so I'm not picking him. I'm not even picking him to win, but I want to talk about him. How do y'all think that Kyle Welcher is going to do on Toledo Ben? I I I want to pick Kyle every single time. I just want to pick him. I don't think he's gonna. I don't think he's gonna do very good. Oh, I want. You know, too much. I think too much water. Yeah, for me with Kyle Welcher, he's a. Good, great fisherman, probably as good as anybody on the Elite Series. But he also he doesn't have anything else to go with him. He's his personality to me is not really like a Matt Robertson or a Gerald Swindle, or he's not appealing to the everyday person. You know what I mean? Yeah. But hey, if you watch his YouTube though, he 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 has some pretty smart stuff. He talks about some. He does. He does. He yeah. does that. He's all fishing, dude. When that dude wakes yeah. up, it's fishing. When he goes to bed, it's fishing. <laughs> I mean, he is all 100%. Oh, yeah. I mean, but to win, it'd be dumb not to say that Ben doesn't have a shot. You know, we all know he can. Yeah. Outside dude, of- I wouldn't sleep on somebody like Brandon Lester either. No. Hey, no, no. You know who's going to win it? KJ Queen. KJ Queen. KJ Queen. I almost picked him just for the last name. 
I like that dude. Uh, he can I fish. like him. And he's a hardcore turd for running a gambler last year. <laughs> he's a hardcore turd for running a gambler last year. I'm just saying. <laughs> but he fished at Bethel University. Yeah. Yeah. Boys from Bethel. All right. Man, it's gonna be a good tournament. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be watching, that's for sure. Oh, dude, I, I got did, all day. He's tomorrow. gonna be watching that other group. Do what? I said I definitely ain't gonna be watching them other guys. No. Hey, so why why did they have the Toyota <laughs> series in the middle of the week? Why didn't they do that on a weekend? Yeah, they've done that the last couple of years now with really? Toyota series being through the week. Yeah. 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 How did Logan do today? Ten pounds. Ten. Yeah, not good. Where's where's yeah. Toyota at this week? Ray Ray. Oh, is it really? Yeah. So he went invitationals and then turned around and did the Toyota series. Yep. And guess what? A lot of the guys that did the same thing, like Jaden Parrish, Dylan Harrell, those guys, they're still at the top like they were last week. Yeah. They didn't move. Yeah. Yep. And Logan's still at the bottom. Like I mean, I'm, dude, I'm waiting on him to catch his break. It's going to happen. Oh, no. I know. I'm waiting. But hey, he doesn't have any quit. No, none. No quit. I, I dig it. I fished with him, and he, bro, he he does know what he's doing. He uh, he's caught some big fish <laughs> out of my boat, and I was like, "Well, how'd you do that, man?" <laughs> you know. He definitely fishes a ton. You know the best I've ever seen him do, and I, and I take no credit for this. It's twenty nine pounds at a night tournament. Is on the back of my boat. I was there. I have seen that dude do awesome on the back of my boat. It's because all he's got to do is think about fishing, and he gets all that other stuff out of his head. Mm -hmm. If I just tell him, "Hey, dude, I call fish here all week." Oh, okay. The confidence is there all of a sudden, and then he's on it. Yep. Yep. Man. He, he's gonna. Oh, he will. He will. <laughs> it's gonna take that one good, that one good show, and then I think it's gonna spark his confidence, and he's gone. This is what they're gonna be throwing. That's the ticket. That's it, right there. That's it. I dig it. I got one better. Let me find it. <laughs> that, Let me find boys. That level level up. What, what what do you call it? That's the feast crawl. That's her right there, boys. That's the ticket. What is that? That's, That's the ticket. The ticket. Yeah. <laughs> that Joker has seen more redfish. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll never forget that video at Cedar Creek. Dylan said. I'll be throwing a banjo minnow most of the day. That's really been the ticket. <laughs> the ticket, dude. That, that's, that's been the best ticket. interview that I've ever done. Oh, man. That was great. That dude. was great. I, I'll, I had that saved on my TikTok, and I'll just go back and randomly watch that from time to time. Oh, no, no. Yeah, dude. It's hey. like March out here in the middle of the <laughs> You got to turn... listen to the whole thing, or it's not the same experience. Yeah. You hey, know what I mean? Every, every tournament. <laughs> Every tournament, me and Colby are like, I wonder if we can put seven in here and see if we can't slip it past them. <laughs> put seven in the bag, boys. Dude, if not that, it's like I'm sitting there and I was like, yeah, dude, the crawfish have most definitely got to be spawning. I'm like, they got crawfish oh, in here, right? Yeah. No question. <laughs> crawfish <laughs> Hey, you want to know something funny? It probably wasn't, man, maybe three or four months after that. Uh, I can't remember where I was. I don't remember if I was in North Dakota. Anyways, somebody on the rig called me over to their house, and they were like, hey, come here and look at this. Is that you? And I was like, yeah, man, that's me. They're like, dude, that, my buddy just sent it to me. That's the funniest thing we done seen all week. He's like, I had no idea that was you. That's great. Really cool, man. I'm glad it started. I mean, it not it's not circulating anymore, really, but I'm glad it picked up and it – it got around. We had a lot of views on that video, so that was cool. Yeah. Yep. Well, guys, I don't have anything <laughs> else for fantasy unless y'all do. 
Well, if y'all get bored, there'll be a cold front blowing in Friday. Well, I'm uh, let's go fish. Dylan, you're gonna be you're gonna be home. Let's see real quick. I'll be on Rayburn Saturday. I'm kind of upset. March 11th through the 15th. I go back to work February 27th, and I will not be back until. March 19th. Dang. All right. And then I'll be home for three weeks. Well, wow, what you got, Colby? Spring break. I was going to say I can slip away. Oh, when is spring break? The 11th through the 15th. Dang. You get to go fish a bass tournament right after you get off on that Saturday. And then you're off for like the entire week after that. Yeah. That's nice. That's that, real nice. Nice. <laughs> hey, just take off work Friday. We'll go catch some. Uh, we'll go catch some fish Friday. <laughs> Dylan, uh, do you have any way to do this when you're on the rig, or is this something you can only do when you're home? Yeah, I can do it on my phone on the rig. Okay. Yeah, yeah you can do it on your phone while you're driving 75 down 59 to the Beltway to I-10 as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kobe, how far do you live from me? Where you at? I'm in Kima. Thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. I think I, I figured it wasn't that far. I was about to say I'm I'm right off of like, one forty six and I ten in Mont Bellevue is like my back door. Oh, dude, I'd be at your house in twenty minutes. Come on. No, I mean not tonight. It's an hour past my bedtime. It's an hour. Oh, and I'm half. about to be like, dude. I mean, I'll I'll keep the light on for you, like. I haven't been up past nine o'clock in two weeks. It's an old man life, man. Hey, hey, Jared. Yep. Y'all still selling houses? Oh yeah. You you looking to buy or sell? I need mean, yeah, sell and buy at the same time. I got you covered, bro. You're gonna sell the house and then just rebuy it. I like it. Not this house. <laughs> I'm getting out of this area, son. I mean, I'll get with you here soon because I'm ready to try to, you know, start to look around and stuff. So, okay. yeah, buddy, we can do that. Sounds like Guys, um. So, well, let's think about this next one. So, Fork is next is literally a week from Toledo Bend, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. So we need we need to have to turn around and do this again pretty quick. Yep. Um, is it is it the week after or two weeks? I think it's a week, ain't it? Is it really? I think they're one. I think they're doing it back to back. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What's uh, the date? On that? Like, like, I mean, I'm looking at it right now. Good stuff, boys. February 29th through March 3rd is Lake Fork. That's not a lot. Yeah, that's a quick turnaround. Jesus Christ. A week, what a, is week, that? a week from today, we need to be doing this again. If y'all, if y'all can, you know, if you can't. Yep. I'm good with it. I'm going to be in Disney. I'm going to be in Disney World. So. Um, <laughs> oh, wait. A week, before, a week from today. Okay, that's fine. I'll be getting ready for the Big Bass Tour then, so. I'll be out here in the garage rigging up. There you go. Gary, when do you leave? I'm leaving uh Monday Monday morning. Early. Okay. Hey and and Dylan, uh, you know, this is our fantasy fishing podcast, right? But we also want to keep doing our uh, normal podcast. So we need to get you on there one day and Ron need to get you back on there again too, man. So <laughs> Oh, dude, we gonna that'll be a fun time right there. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what the world's longest podcast is, but it's probably gonna happen. Yeah. Hey, hey. and uh, you know it'd be really cool <laughs> if we got Bo on here with us one time too. Yeah. Bo, Bo would be a fun. Oh, yeah. Bo is yeah. a lot of fun talking, man. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, we're gonna need some more mics. Bo's no, a lot. Of- hey. hey. And uh, do a. First year and second year angler of the year special. 
<laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Who's uh who's leading right now? Nathan and Billy. Billy. Huh? Yeah. They're kicking our ass this year. It ain't even close. <laughs> the lowest they place is fourth. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it wholeheartedly. They're kicking our Dylan, ass. Dylan, did you hear about uh, Nathan getting a, that hook in his eye? I oh. heard somebody got a hook in their eye. You, yeah. So, so <laughs> Billy caught a fish, and Nathan went to net it, and it shook out. It was a rattle trap. It shook out, and he and it popped up, and it caught him right there, dude. He said a half inch from his eyeball. Yeah, they left. They left the lake and went to St. Augustine Emergency Room, got it fixed up, and then came back out and still got fourth place. <laughs> <laughs> they left the boat on the bank with the live wells running. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. Them dudes are pretty good, huh? Oh, yeah. they're, they're pretty, they've been they've been good for a while too, because they uh they fish the three F stuff, and they're always in the top fishing the three F too. Yeah. Well, shit, they've been fishing the same lake for the past twenty five years. Yeah, Nathan fished the um, um, Bass Nation with my dad years ago, 10, 15, 20 years ago. So yeah. they've been fishing these East Texas stuff for a long time. They've been after it. Yeah. Yeah, man. Good guys, though, man. Super nice. Super nice guys. Yeah, they're they're super cool. Hopefully, we can keep them around for a while because they're they're good guys. Man, I hope, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they spread the word, too, which I really appreciate. You know, they get. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, they brought us four new teams this year. Yeah. Yep. The only thing is, is that Rayburn and now Conroe are the same day because of the first two tournaments of 3F. <laughs> uh, so all of those all of those guys like uh ryan zwimmerman and tudor and like um i can't think of the other ones wait the other the tudor, the tudor guys are from there from them too mm-hmm. yeah and they got what second or third at rayburn they got second second yeah what was y'all's date for conroe march 9th march 9th no ron you're thinking of toby tyler Oh yeah, yeah okay. Uh, okay. They came and fished the Fayette tournament. Like they all know each other from being up there that right. close. But yeah. no, Nate, I don't know if Nathan brought him over or not. Okay, okay. Do no, you remember cool. when we? Uh, do you remember when we caught all those fish on them them jerk baits? Yeah. Both of those spots ought to be hot. Yeah, I thought about that already. I I remember I I remember the the first one. I don't remember exactly where the second spot was, but I, I know I have a general idea. Ray's Cove on the right. I know Ray's Cove one, but I don't know the other spot. Driving Range Cove, straight out from the nets. Yeah. That whole bank over there that drops off real hard. Yeah. Hey, we're going to have to cut this part just so everybody knows. <laughs> Gary, go ahead. Go ahead and edit this out. Well, the good thing is I don't think anybody knows where Ray's Cove is. No, yeah, I don't think so. Ray'd be the only one. Yeah. I never heard of Ray's Cove in my life. Because <laughs> that's because Dylan made it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Y'all be cool, right, brother. Yeah. I'm out. Later.